Hello guys. My name is Desmond and I welcome you to my lesson for today where we'll be looking at your mathematics. Obviously, as you can see over there, we'll be looking at a chapter called Analytical Geometry. Ladies and gentlemen, please do allow me to say it is very much important that I say it is very, very much important because what I'm about to say, it's very much important, good people, and most importantly, um, please do make sure that by the end of each and every lesson that I conduct, you learn something new. Very, very much important, ladies and gentlemen over there. So guys, without any waste of time, I assume all of you guys were able to see the question paper that was sent in the group. So I've given you guys important information for analytical geometry, which is number one, the distance formula. For those of you guys who attended my lesson yesterday, we did discuss all that you needed to know regarding the distance formula. Over there, we've got the gradient formula. I've also explained all that you needed to be aware of regarding the gradient formula. And also, as you can see over there, we've got the midpoint formula, where the midpoint refers to the middle point. It's a point which is in the middle of the two points. And also, I did explain to you guys on how you determine an equation of a straight line from the given diagram. Very, very much important, ladies and gentlemen, that you catch up on that lesson that we did the previous day. And most importantly, guys, we did discuss to say for lines which are parallel to each other, the gradient of the first line is equal to the gradient of the second line. And lastly, uh, for perpendicular lines, which form a 90 degree angle, the gradient of line one multiplied by the gradient of line two, it is equals to negative one. I'm telling you guys, this is all that you need to know for you to be able to answer any question related to a analytical geometry. Very, very much important, ladies and gentlemen, over there. So what I'm going to do is to bring this diagram which was sent in the group. So all that I'm going to be doing is just to refer to that information uh, which has got formulas. Uh, as I'll be answering these questions. I'm not sure, is it blurry on your side? Uh, are you guys able to see over there or is it blurry? Uh, I can't see, sir. Is it everyone who's not able to I see? I can see. My, according to me, I can so uh, still the same. You still can't see, ne? Oh, yeah, one of my. Oh, okay. Then it's fine. So what I want to do now is just to read through this given information. Then I'm just going to take it away, and then from there we'll deal with the hand-drawn diagram. So. Quickly, 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 I'm just going to read that question number three. So it reads as follows. Let's see. In the diagram below, P is a point having the coordinates where X is seven, Y is four. Q is a point having the coordinates where x is 6, y is also 6. R is a point having the coordinates x being 0, 
a uh, y being three and s a uh, x is represented by t y is represented by k all of those are the vertices of quadrilateral p q r s p q r s very very much important ladies so now this is all the information that is given and all of this information is represented on this diagram which means we can now refer to that diagram because all the given information is represented fully on that given diagram very very much important ladies and gentlemen so now maybe let's try to have a look at our very first question which is 3.1 and the question says calculate the length of pq and most importantly leave your answer in sad form so you've got two sentences over there this question is allocated to max what is the cream of the question i always say in each and every question there's a cream of the question and the cream of the question is exactly what they want you to do so in this case they say calculate the length of pq leave your answer in such form so the length is the cream of the question the length of what the length of pq leave your answer in such form so this is an instruction to say your answer must be in the form of a sat in short they are simply saying make sure your answer is in the form of a square root so that's what is meant by the sat form but now they want you to calculate the length of p q and leave your answer in the form of a square root so the other weight in mathematics for length is distance so now let's bring our receipt i'm telling you guys if you can know all of these things by heart you will never go wrong is there someone who can tell which formula are we going to use in this case distance is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 plus squared plus y2 minus y1 squared 100 percent so all that we need to do is to write that formula uh, and then the rest we'll see later so the distance is actually uh, the same as the length so this is square root of let's say x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared so now uh, remember for us to use all of these formulas guys all of these formulas for us to use these that these that and also to calculate this and that uh, you need two things always two things and those things it could be two points if you don't have two points you must be given the distance and one point then they might want you to calculate the other point so what i'm saying in short is that you must always have two things very very much important ladies and gentlemen over there so now uh, let's see what are the two things p and q where is p maybe let's write it over there to say p uh, what is it oh there is p having seven and four and again we've got q being six and six so between p and q which letter comes first i think it's p so that means this will be our x1 this will be our y1 this will be our what is it x2 and this will be our y2 so i like using a the order of alphabets to assign which number will be a for the first values and which ones will be for the second values so it makes it easy for me to substitute without any confusion so now i know 
x2, it is actually going to be 6 minus x1. Uh, what is it? Is it not 7? Then it's 7 squared plus the other value being y2, it is 6 minus uh, there we've got a uh, what is it y1 and all of these is equals to let's see a uh, what is all of that is there someone who has punched all of that already square the square root, root of five the square root, root, of, five. root of five so this is the format in which you should leave your answer i'm not sure are we all on the same page on this one is everyone happy there yes sir yes sir okay yes sir. 100%. so now quickly 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 let's try to move on to the next question one thing for sure remember this question is allocated to marks yes. you are most likely to be given a mark for correct substitution and for correct final answer in the form in which it was requested very very much important ladies and gentlemen over there that you pay full attention to all the details so now let's try to move on to the next question being 3.2 so let's see what exactly are they uh, saying there so they say if if t has got the coordinates of 7 over 2 and 7 over 2. If t is the midpoint of qs, determine the coordinates of s. Yay. This question is allocated three marks, ladies and gentlemen. So let's see. If T is the midpoint of QS, where's QS? There's Q, there's S. Maybe let's do a dotted line a joining there. And they're saying if T is the midpoint of QS, we know that the midpoint is a point which is actually in between. So that means the T that they are talking about, it is actually that one over there. And they say this t is 7 over 2 and 7 over 2. Hmm. So now they want us to calculate or determine the coordinates of s. Yo, 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 yo. Are you guys, are you guys not scared over there? What, which formula can we use? Um, Midpoint formula. Uh, the what? Midpoint formula. The midpoint, the midpoint formula. Oh yes, yes, because in the sentence they are talking about the midpoint, isn't it? So maybe let's write that formula. So on that formula, I've said the midpoint of the x value it's equals to uh, you just take x one, you plus it with x two. Then you divide by 2, because this is the formula. For the y value, you do the same. Is the midpoint of y being equals to y1 plus y2 over 2. So, hey, my guys, then, since I'm in love, hmm, what are we going to do from here? Okay, to make things easy, let's maybe write uh, the two points that we know are involved in this question. So we know that this middle point that is given as t, a, it is equals to, or maybe let me write this thing in this manner to say, we have that line um, being S, having the coordinates of T and K. We also have this one of Q, having 6 and 6. Then we were just given this middle point, uh, being T, having the coordinates 
of 7 over that and 7 over that. It makes things easy when we do it this way. I'm just not sure. Is there someone who would like to just suggest something in relation to that question? So they want us to determine that. I'm not sure. Is there someone who would like to guide us in terms of how to approach that one? Uh, uh, Shriyas is speaking. Shriyas, go for it, honorable member. So what if we use Q and T? Uh, let's see, Q and T, yes. Uh, how can we use them, uh, Shriyas? So since Q would be our X1 and Y1, mm-hmm. and T would be our X2 and Y2, X2 and Y2. Mm-hmm. And so we substitute it uh, in the in, equation. In the equation. Okay. Thanks very much for that input, uh, uh, Shriya. I'm not sure. Is, is there someone who also wants to su- suggest something before uh, I, I, I start with the calculation or answering that question? Yes, sir. Uh, Lerato, hold on. There's someone who mentioned their name. Uh, who was it? Was in Tavi Singh? Tavi Singh. Was in Tavi Singh? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, go for it. Okay. Okay, go for it. So I say we use um, Q and S. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. We will make um, Q our... X1 and Y1 and X will be our X2 and Y2. Mm. What about T? So I think it's already given to us. Okay. Noted. I think a uh, uh, Prudence was speaking there. Prudence. What are you saying? No, I was thinking of using Q and T because we can't mix numbers and letters. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, maybe, Prudence, let, let me, um, let's discuss it. Um, so, this formula says the point which is in the middle is equals to all of this. So on this point, S, T, and Q, which point is in the middle, Shriyas? Point T. So that means point T, it is going to go to a there. And also for the Y, it is going to go there. Why? Because it is a point which is in the middle. And the points which are on the sides, they are therefore going to the uh, free us. I'm not sure if if um, you guys are able to see that. Uh, prudence, that, does it make sense the way I've explained it? Yes, it makes sense. Yeah. So uh, the point which is in the middle, it is the one that goes to this side of the formula and both of these are the points on the sides so they're the ones that you substitute over there so maybe let's try to see if we can have enough space over there so let's see that means uh, this is the x of the middle point so that means you are having a what is it seven maybe let me use a different marker there and say uh, we are having 7 over 2 being equals to uh, what is x1? Uh, we can take x1 as that. So that means x1 it is going to be t plus this is going to be our x2 being 6 over a 2. Then we do the same for y. They said the middle point there it is also a 7 over 2. What is a y1? Obviously, it is going to be k plus a y2 at 6 
divided by two. So obviously what we do is just to cross multiply. It's more like we're saying two times seven. What is that? Is it not a 14? So it's more like we still have that 14 over two being equals to a T, a, what is it, plus six. You can still do the same. You just cross multiply. A, you still have 14 over two being equals to a K plus six. I'm not sure. Am, am I losing you guys there or are we still on the same page? Or am I making lost a mistake, me. someone? I am lost. Uh, uh, step number, number two. This one, nay. Yes. Maybe let me let me redo it. What do you think, uh, Gabs? Who is it? Kamorel, what do you think? Let me redo it, nay. Yes. Okay. So... Remember, what you need to do is to remove that number at the bottom. So what you need to do, uh, that's what we call cross-multiplication. So it's more like you are multiplying the whole of this thing. That's why I'm putting it inside the brackets. You are oh, multiplying okay. the whole of that by that two. So then you remain okay. with T plus six. Uh, does it make yes. sense now? Yeah, yeah, and I understand. Okay, then it's fine. Uh, in the meantime, you can mute your mic. Uh, make sure to unmute in case if you are lost someone. So you can just um, interrupt in the middle of my explanation. So on this side, obviously, we are having that. So now, uh, as I've explained, obviously, all of this is more like you're seeing two times seven is equals to 14 over that too. But remember, uh, there's, this song, there's this song I used to sing during term one and term two. Some of you might not know this song. Chawalala uh, one side, Maluleka one side. Three years. Do you still remember this song? Yes, sir. Chawalala one side. Can you explain to everyone uh, what did I say about this song, uh, Three years? It says that. You have to have your letters on one side and your numbers on the other side. Ladies and gentlemen, what this song says is that in mathematics, all that you need to do is to take numbers one side, uh, letters one side. So can you see we've got letter T over there, but it has a number. So let's move this number to the other side so that we remain with letter on one side. Remember, uh, as long as it crosses that equal sign, it changes a sign. Uh, it's either it's a plus. If it's a plus, it changes to a minus. Now you remain with um, your T over there. Same thing here, guys. Chabalala, one side. Baloi, one side. Lerat, uh, your surname is being mentioned there. I'm sure you will never, 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 never forget that when you get to a situation where you've got letters and numbers, you always want to put letters on one side and numbers on one side. So I'm sure everyone uh, have a better understanding of what's going on over there. So you can just punch the whole of this on your calculator. What are you getting? Whatever that you get is the value of T. Similarly, what are you getting, honorable member? Who's that? Yeah. T is close to 1, then K is close to 1, which means the so, goodness of X, X is close to 1, then Y is close to 1. Do you guys agree with that? Is she telling yes, the truth? Sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so that means uh, actually T is 1 and then uh, K is 1. I'm not sure. Do you guys allow me to the next question. Uh, do you allow me to go to the next question or is there someone who's got a question? Yeah. Heritage, are you happy? Sir? Are you happy? Uh, no, I'm sharp. I'm <laughs> sharp. I have a question. Cindy, I have a question.
Okay, I think uh, she might be speaking on that side and forgot to uh, unmute her mic. But I'm sure we are not leaving anyone behind. So let's move to a 3.3. Let's see. If the coordinates of S are one and one, yay. Do you guys notice something? It's more like a somehow or indirectly they are giving us the answer of the previous question. So for those of you who got different answer there, just a uh, try to redo that same question with the aim of arriving to those coordinates. So it says if the coordinates of S are one and one, show that P R is equals to Q S. Where is P? There is P. Where is R? There is R. Uh, where is Q? There is Q. And there is S. If the coordinates of S are one and one, show that P, R, and Q, S A, are equal. And this question is allocated to Max. How do we show, ladies and gentlemen, that P, R is equals to Q, S? How can we show that? Perpendicular, the product of the gradient is equal to negative one, if I'm not wrong. Hmm. You are right, but the question is, uh, what you are saying, Prudence, is it relevant to this uh, question? Hmm. Let me give you a strategy on this one, guys. Uh, someone wanted to say something, but it's fine. Uh, who's speaking there? Lera Joseph. Uh, Lerato, go for it. So I think I must use the distance formula. The distance formula. Can you can you explain? Uh, can you go deeper, Mama? Mm. Go deeper. Go deeper. Go deeper, Lerato. Go deep. What are you saying? So I think the only way to find us if if um. Q, S, and P, R are equal is to find their length. If their length and their lengths are equal, then yeah, they are equal. If their lengths are equal, then they are equal, isn't it? Yes. But Lerato, hey, for two marks, um, seven, um, um, ningi, mm. for two marks, Pela 
Cindy, auvumela ni na milapa. No luvongwa vini. Uibona ganjani lenda avali. Ungatu msevinzu mningila. Hmm. For two marks le rato. Hey. But one thing for sure. Eh, what le rato is saying there. She is absolutely correct. If we want to show that. PR is equals to. A Q S. You can use the distance formula to calculate the distance of P R, of which it is going to be equals to the distance of Q S. Here's another way. A if you have a triangle, ladies and gentlemen. If you have a triangle, do you guys agree that if you have a diagonal line uh, connecting this point and that point, if this is the midpoint, do you guys agree that this midpoint is the same midpoint for a diagonal from that and that point? I'm not sure. Uh, do you guys get what I'm trying to say over there? Yes, I understand, sir. Uh, you are saying that uh, the sides are equal. All sides. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Let's, let, let's try to uh, discuss that one, uh, Kamukhel. What, what are you saying there in terms of the sides? Uh, the size of this chain, uh... Oh, yeah, yes. So, yes, if you are talking about so, these two diagonal lines, they are equal, yes, equal if you have a triangle because uh, this side is equal to that side, this side is equal to that side. Even if you, you are dealing with a square, on a square, okay. uh, if you draw a diagonal line and again a diagonal line, this is the midpoint which is the same for that line and also for that line. So I'm not sure. Is there someone who can therefore, in addition to this method, uh, explain again in terms of how can we prove if this is equal to that or that is equal to that? So, can I say something? I don't understand. Yeah, yeah, but unga kuluma. Yes. Um, so in the Ebony method, but say the disadvantage of this method is that it is not given, like they are not specific with this diagram is a, is a rectangle or what. It's a worry by delaying. Langwama. Okay, Lerato has got a point over there. Lerato has got a point over there. But Lerato, a in this case, even though we are not told, but the manner in which the statement is given and also uh, by looking at the marks, certainly we can be sure that we can use that. I'm telling you, Lerato, if, if that method is not applicable, that's if when we use it, we won't find this. So it's more like, we are just trying to prove that the midpoint of this and that it is actually equal to that. If it's not equal, then we know something is wrong. And again, even if you use the distance formula, Lerato, uh, um, if this is not a rectangle and you use the distance formula, you still, you still won't find uh, the same distance of that and that and that and that. I'm not sure if you get it, uh, Lerato, but one thing for sure, 
a that's why i'm saying your method it is 100 percent correct it's only that it's going to take much of your time because you will need to use the distance formula to calculate using that and that and you still do the same uh, using that and that whereas with the midpoint formula you just use this and that and then from there you get uh, the same coordinates of t if not then uh, that's when you can try other methods but the manner in which this question is being asked it is actually giving you an instruction to say show that pr is equals to qs which means already these things are equal we just need to show uh, unlike if maybe they said uh, is pr equals to qs then they put a question mark then you can still use the distance formula or that midpoint formula to just prove if t is equals to that if it's not then it means this is not a triangle i'm not sure uh, Lerato, uh, do, do you now agree with me on that one or oh. Uh, what what are you saying, Lerat? Mm. Uh, you saying yeah, O o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o PR is equal to QS. See, si prove again, Johnny Land. Woman, chumile, chumile, no money. Are you, are you there, honourable member? I'm here, sir. Are, are we not losing you? Uh, let's say no, sir. A beke, a beke, a beke. It seems like someone wants to give us an answer, but it's fine. I will just quickly show you on how you tackle that one. So you use the distance formula. Sir, no, I no, think we should point. first. Mm -hmm. I think we should first find the distance of PR, then equate it to find, and we equate it and find, and also find the distance of QS. Okay, that is what Lerato was saying, and both of you guys are correct. Maybe let me show you uh, what I was saying, uh, of which Lerato ended up uh, vooming with me over there. So this is what I was saying to say, let's try to determine the midpoint of uh, this imaginary line, which is joining a uh, P and R. And I'm telling you now that it is going to be seven over two. Let's see the midpoint of the X value of RP. It is going to be x1 plus x2 over 2. What is x1? x1 is 0. Plus what is x2? It's 7 over 2. What is this thing, guys? If you punch it on a calculator, is it not 7 over 2? Let's maybe try also to check the midpoint of y of p r. Uh, this is supposed to be y uh, 1 plus y 2 over 2. What is y 1? Is it not 3, guys? Plus, what is y 2? Is it not 4 divided by 2? What is this plus that? Is it not 7 over uh, 2? So that means the midpoint, uh, which is at point T, this is actually equals to 7 over 2 and 7 over 2. Therefore, a PR is equals to QS. Even if you do the same using the midpoint formula, no, no, 
the distance formula and you do all of that, you equate it to all of that, you are still going to get the same distance. Uh, are you guys happy with both of these methods? Mm? I'm, I'm satisfied. Last one to confirm. Uh, Lisedi, are you okay there? Okay, 100%. So now, uh, let's try to move to the next question. This one, it, 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 it seems to be interesting. And it says, show that QR is perpendicular to RS. Yo, 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 yo. How are we going to show this one, ladies and gentlemen? And this question is allocated for marks. How are we going to show this one? That QR is perpendicular to 2X. Oh, no, to QS. So, you can see that you can see that you can see that Hey, uh, who is the other one who is saying something? Lerato? Yes, Yibo. lento. we must calculate the gradient QR RS. Vese? Yes, calculate the gradient. We expect to one of the gradient o mauthu eyo dayawo mele be reciprocal yenye mense ke sawa multiply mense expecta i product yethu ibe u negative 1 mense so bese siphovile ladies and gentlemen what lerato is saying over there she is saying that what we know about perpendicular lines is that a the gradient of line one multiplied by the gradient of line two uh, will give you negative one. So that means we might need to calculate the gradient of this line, the gradient of this line, multiply, multiply them together and expect to find negative one. I'm not sure. Uh, did you all understand that part before we start with the calculations? Oh, sir. You, 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 you didn't oh, understand it. Who was it? Gamrel. Understand the question. Yes. You, you, you didn't understand that part. Yes, name. That's what you say. Okay. So <laughs> let's see. Yeah. See, 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 one and yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. So two lines can either be parallel or perpendicular to each other. So let me explain this part. So as you are dealing with this type of questions, expect a question where they might talk about perpendicular or parallel lines. So that's why I was saying for parallel lines, a, the gradient, this is M, the gradient, maybe let's say this is line one. So the gradient of line one times the gradient of line two being this one. When you multiply, no, no, for parallel lines, uh, their gradients are equal. So that means, for example, uh, you know this is a rectangle. So that means this line and that line, they've got equal gradients. Also this line and that line has got the same gradients. It's more like the steepness of both of these lines, the steepness is the same. Also for these lines, 
the slope or the steepness is the same. So now, um, when it comes to lines which are perpendicular, uh, for example, you might have a line like that and another one crossing like that. If they are perpendicular, it means they form a 90 degree over there. Just like uh, here, these two lines, since it's a rectangle, we know we have 90 degree angle uh, at each and every uh, corner. Meaning these lines which form a T, always T uh, forms perpendicular lines. That's the 90 degree angle over. So that means the gradient of this line, when you multiply it with the gradient of this line, you're going to always get negative one. So that means for perpendicular lines, when you calculate the gradient of this line and you multiply it with the gradient of that line, you're going to get negative one. So it is going to make perfect sense when we do the calculation. So let's see. Let's calculate the gradient of QR. Where is QR? Let's see. Uh, there is QR. So let's calculate the gradient of that line. So that means uh, the gradient is equals to, we know it's Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So that means uh, we can have, let's say, R as our second value. So that means it is going to be 3 uh, as Y and then also 6 over there over 0 as X minus a 6 over there. What are we getting there? What is this? This is negative 3. This is negative 6. Then it's positive 1 over 3. I'm not sure. Am I correct in saying that? Let's see the gradient of QS. Uh, where's QS? There is... Hmm? The gradient of QS. No, 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 no. Not QS, but RS. Not QS, but RS. Uh, RS. I think I've copied that one incorrectly. RS being that one. RS. Uh, I'm not sure. Are we still together, guys? Or am I losing you before I continue? I'm good, sir. Okay. Camilo, uh, yeah, yeah. Chumile, Shriyas, you've got a question? Yes, sir. So, okay. three, so 3 minus 6, which is all over 0 minus 6. So it's uh, 1 over 2, not it, 1 over it, 3. Is it one over two? Let's see. Oh yes, 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 yes. Uh, thanks very much on yes, that one. Yes, right. it's one over two. Yes, thanks very much, guys. So, uh, it means you guys we are together on that one. So, let's now try to continue. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. So, what is for? No, no, we are now on RS and not QS. Um, Rs. So it's going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. What is what is a maybe let's take this as the second value. So that means it is going to be 3 minus a 1. Remember this coordinates y is 1 over a that one there is 0 minus still x is 1 there. What are we having there, guys? We have this minus this. It is equals to 2. And then this uh, minus that. Is it not negative 1? So it's more like this thing is actually a negative 2. I'm not sure. Am I correct on that one? Yes, sir, you are correct. Okay. So now, uh, can you guys see that? We then substitute into that formula to check if we're going to get negative one. So the gradient number one, uh, we calculated it to be one over two. Let's multiply that. Uh, what was that, guys? It's negative two. If you punch this and it gives you negative one, then it means uh, we have shown that QR is, is parallel to, no, no, it's perpendicular to uh, RS. What are you getting when you multiply those?
The answer is negative one. The answer is negative one. So that means uh, we are correct, and that's how we do it. I'm not sure. No, is everyone sir. happy then? Yebu. So is it six minus one all over zero minus one? Uh, where are we three years? So the second one. This one? Yes, sir. Uh, so on this one is R S. Where is R? There is R and there is S. Can you see? Yes, sir. Yeah, so is three being that y minus one being this one over x being zero there minus a one. Can can you see it a three years? Does, yes, does sir. it make a does it make sense now? It does. Okay. Uh, anyone who's got a question, guys? Or does it make sense to everyone? Hey, Makes guys. Sense. Hello. It, it makes, oh, makes sense. sense. Okay. All right. Hundred yes. percent. So now, uh, let's try to move on to the next uh, question. So, the next question says, "Hence, the moment examiner starts saying hence, it means you need to refer to the previous answer. Hence, what type of special quadrilateral is PQRS?" motivate your answer what type of quadrilateral is this guys rectangle motivate your answer honorable member what is the motivation there because the diagonals are equal and one of the interior angles is equal to 90 degrees hmm hmm in in term nandi ya pindwa ungai pinda a footy footy a ndombo because the diagonals are equal and one of the interior angles is equal to 90 degrees hmm. the diagonals are equal and a one, one of, of the interior angles is equal to 90 degrees. Hmm. It's equals to uh, 90 degrees. Yo, 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 yo. Did you guys hear that? Hmm? Yes, sir. Honorable members. Did you guys hear that? Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, that is exactly how you answer or respond to this question. By so doing, you get full two marks. So that means this statement is applicable to all um, rectangles. I think also uh, it applies to a square. Am I, am I, am I right, honorable member? Even with a square, I can still say the same thing, isn't it? In terms of reasoning. Mapru, hmm? was it you who gave that reason? Yes, sir, it was me. Can, can I still use the same reasoning for a square? I can, isn't it? Yes, you can, but... Yes, you can, but in squares, I prefer you say all sides are equal. Yo, 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 yo. Hey, guys, am I, am I the only one who's learning, or are we all learning? Eh, all so we all Sir? learning. 100%. So, 3.6 says calculate the size of 
angle S in triangle R S Q. This question is allocated three marks. Calculate the size of R S Q. Yo. Let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. What exactly is XNM saying there? So they say in triangle a uh, hey. What's going on with my markers, guys? Uh, in triangle R S Q, they want us to calculate angle S. So the moment you're given something similar to this, try to draw that triangle. Where is R? There is R. Where is S? There is S. Is there. Where is Q? Oh, there. Up there is Q. So that means uh, this is the triangle that they are talking about. And remember, as you can see there, I did say we have a 90 degree angle over there. So this is R. This is Q, this is S, and the angle they want us to calculate is that one over there. I'm not sure, guys. Uh, what do we know? What do we know about what? I'm just not sure of how to ask this question without giving you an answer or a hint. Or maybe let me say, how can we answer this question? Sir? Uh, sir, I think we know, we can use the answer we got from the, from number one, yeah, PQ is equal to the square root of five. Mm, PQ is equal to the square root, okay, what, what can we do with that one? Sir? We, uh, we can use it to calculate for the triangle of S. Okay. Uh, hold on to that thought. Someone was speaking. Kamuhel, was it you? Go for it. Uh, I think so. So, funa area of S. Area of S. Yeah. Maybe explain. Um, can you go deeper? So, so use the... Uh, the formula yeah yeah in triangle ne? Mm. the area corner let me call the formula but i remember this uh last year area is half a yes. breath times height yes mm. uh yeah then we substitute uh, i don't know how but i do remember this question mm. Okay, or maybe uh, a what, what is the question asking us to calculate? What what how will our final oh, the size? The size, sir. Yeah. Or the size name. Yes. So how will our final answer look like? Let's say maybe uh, you get to the final answer. How will it look like? Will it maybe be seven meters or maybe two square root of that? Or will it be uh, maybe 13 degrees or uh, what is it? How will our final answer look like? I think in meters. Oh, in I'm meters. Okay. No. Okay. Uh, uh, prudence. What, what can you say about our final answer? Uh, I think our final answer should give us cause something like, you know, like you, Linyaka, the final answer, maybe 71, hey. comma something. You. 71, <laughs> comma something. Hey, did you throw bones there, uh, Prudence? Hmm? <laughs> Apo gra- no. decimal no di tia ga di decimal no o tsholetse marapo mo wa re makhosi 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 no like kitere answer number 1 yar find uh, number 1 was 
couple of the left of pick mm. yes mm. then a square root of 5 out of 5 out of 5 then square mm. root of 2 square root of 2 mm. yeah then you say r s q is equals to arc cos then you substitute Okay, wait. This one, where is it coming from? This one. I want to copy Sawena somewhere, somewhere. I want to copy Sawena. Hey, prudence. I could say. Hmm? So I use different method from yours. Hey, Mara, this one, where is it coming from? Where did you steal this answer? Sure. Yeah. We use which guy can have five five square root of two. Like as first time it did, I did like a scolong. Mara, ye ye chwa kai. Kika mchori humani mo number two. Oh num, eh ye 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 mo mo question two. Yes. Hmm. Let's see. No, for, for question two, uh, can you see question two? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, the coordinates of A. Co the coordinates of, of Q. S. Oh, if the coordinates of S are that. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Uh, but Prudence, this one, where, where is it coming from, this one? How did you get this one? Okay, you better get the different methods since in Ungilera Dira Sama through this question paper at school. Mm. Mm. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, then it's fine. We'll see uh, how will our final answer look like. Um, maybe it will look like the one that you got in school. So, Maybe let me explain. Uh, guys, do you agree that QP is equals to QR since this thing is a rectangle? Do you guys agree with me on that one? Hmm? Ebeke, Ebeke, can you hear me? Sir, I did not get that. Please repeat what you were saying. Okay. So, I was saying, if you have a rectangle, do you agree that this side is equals to this side and also this side is equals to that side yes sir. so that means yes, if sir. this side is equals to square root of five it means also this side is equals to square root of five being this side Yes. So now, uh, why not trying to find that side, the length of that side? And then from there, we will use the trig ratios to calculate that angle. I'm not sure. Does it make sense now? So, say so you are saying how the QS, QS is going to be our hypotenuse. Yes, QS is hypotenuse. This is adjacent, this is opposite. Does it make sense to everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Lissedi, 
ABK, are we all on the same page? Chumile, Longstar, do you guys yes, get that sir. part? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm trying to call this honorable member, but she's not responding, uh, or he's not responding. I'm not sure if we're on the same page or what, but let me do this. A uh, honorable member has been quiet. Okay, so if we are all on the same page on that one, let's maybe use the distance formula to calculate the distance of QR. So that means the distance of QR uh, is going to be equals to, let's punch it guys. Uh, maybe let's just substitute uh, X is zero there minus six squared plus Y is three there minus six squared. Uh, what are we getting there as the distance? Three is the root of five. Is it correct? Yes, sir. Okay, so you guys yes, are saying sir. have three square root of five. Three square root of five. So which trick ratio can we use? Tan, cos, or sine? I think it's cos, cos theta. Cos theta. Which sides do we have over there? I say tan. Someone is saying it's tan, someone is saying it's cos. Which one is which? Sorry, I have an adjacent and opposite. So yeah, it's time in this case. Yes. We have the side which is opposite to the angle. We have the side which is adjacent to the angle. So that means in this case, we are going to use tan of angle S is equal to opposite over adjacent. What is opposite? Is it not 3 square root of 5 over adjacent is square root of 5? So that means <coughs> angle S, those two can cancel, I think. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm wrong on that one. Um, if you don't want to make mistakes, you can still punch as it is. So let's say it's second function of three square root of five over square root of five. Uh, you punch all of that and then you get your final answer. How will your final answer look like in this case? So the answer is 71,57. 71,57 degrees. I'm not sure. Are you all on the same page with us on that one? Is everyone happy there? Yes, sir. The answer is correct. As I was saying, I used a different method. But now, this method used, uh, do you understand it? No, I don't understand it. Okay, 
So the reason you are not understanding it is because maybe you are not yet confident in understanding how to use a turn course and sign. Because at your school, I'm suspecting you have this site or you, te- you determine the distance of that site. Uh, when you use that site, that's when you use course. That's correct, sir. Yes, if you have this site, that's when you use course. So that means at your school, you used this point and that point to determine that distance. So uh, you might need to make sure that you don't miss any of my upcoming lessons. So otherwise, uh, just make sure to catch up on my previous lessons where I explained to say, a uh, turn is actually opposite over adjacent. And then cause called causa. Causa for adjacent over hypotenuse. And then sine is sinua, uh, being opposite over hypotenuse. So can you see? You just need to know which side is which. In this case, this side is called adjacent because it is the side next to the angle and the 90 degree angle. The side which is opposite to 90 degree, it is called hypotenuse. And then this one opposite to the angle is called opposite. So according to our right angle to triangle, can you see we have this side and that side? So what is the name? of this side. This one is adjacent, this one is opposite. So we come here to check for the ratio that has adjacent and uh, opposite. It can't be this one because this one is hypotenuse. It can't be that one because it is hypotenuse. Therefore, it is this one. But maybe if you have, if you have, for example, this side, and not that side. Then it means you have a, what is it? Hypotenuse and adjacent. You come here, you say, which one has adjacent and hypotenuse? You can see it's this one. So that means cause it is the right one to use when you have that. I'm not sure. Uh, does it make sense now, uh, uh, Gabelo? Oh, it still it, it still doesn't make sense. No lufo. Fuyani. Hey, hey, bro. I understand what you're saying, bro. You, you get it, ne? Yeah, I get it. Okay. Is there someone who's got a question before I close the lesson for today? No question, no. Hey, bro. Um, hi, Esbiana. I can be. I can appreciate if you can help us on science, bro. Because I'm sorry at this topic now. Uh, okay, it's fine. Uh, Vian, just make sure to send an inbox after this lesson. Uh, but for now, is there anyone who's got a question in relation to this? No, no, Marcos. No, Marcellus. Listen, D. Are we okay there? Chumile. Please, guys. Say, if you are so then please explain to me so that he can be motivated. Because I'm sorry to this topic. Yes. Yes, all is well, all is well. Okay, 100%. So, guys, thanks very much for joining. I hope you did enjoy as much as I did. My name is Desmond. 
and I'm out. Thank you, sir.